Sammy was interviewed about what Chad did to him. He said, I was angry and hurt, biting my tongue. I'm going to see what he says later on tonight. Then Bronson walks up and says, forget that guy. You got bigger problems. Sammy says, any time, any place. Bronson goes to leave, but then comes back, beats the hell out of Sammy, pummels him everywhere, says Sammy's looking at his next Intercontinental Challenger. Yeah, so that could be at the pay-per-view or on TV soon, but it's definitely happening. Yeah. Which actually is, you know, like long-term planning because we knew about this one well before WrestleMania. Yeah. Alpha Academy came out, and uh, Chad's doing a promo, and Maxine, Tozau, and Otis are just standing behind him with their heads down. They're so disappointed. And Chad says, you know, Sammy won that Intercontinental title match. We had a great match. He beat me in his hometown. Great story, but it was not enough. He saw me weeping in the corner. He put that belt right in front of me. And then I raised his hand, gave him his moment, but still not good enough. He had to go celebrate with his wife and his child right in front of me. That should have been my moment. His, his, his wife and his father. Yep. He said it should have been my WrestleMania, my celebration with my wife and children. But no, he says, I was wasting my time training Sami Zayn, just like I've been wasting my time training a bunch of freaking losers. The crowd gasps. And he says, Tazawa, you got a problem with that? You do your stupid dance, you come out here, and you just lose. Pathetic. He says, Maxine, you're pretty as a princess. You're dumb as a box of rocks. And then he says, Otis, my prize pupil, my number one guy, you're the biggest disappointment of them all. And he says, we need to be on the same page. Focus on me. We're going to win my title together. And I need you all to say that uh, we're in it together to the end, no matter what. And he makes Otis say no matter what into the mic. Fans boo. Chad throws down the mic and leaves. So he's a heel. The rest of Alpha Academy are baby faces at the moment. But but, but they haven't split from him yet. Yep. They're, uh, they're still following him at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm writing Rick Shaber, Santos, and J.D. McDonough. This match was not smooth. Uh, there were a lot of weird spots in this match, including at the end... Uh, they're fighting up top, and Santos hits a top rope Frankensteiner on Ricochet, which was not a very good top rope Frankensteiner. And Ricochet flies off into a leg drop on JD and smashed him right in the face. And JD well, grabs his face. That's a, that's a hard spot. Yeah, and then Andrade picks him up, and JD's like bleeding from the mouth. So I don't know if he was supposed to land on him or if I think I think he was supposed to land on him. Yeah. I mean, whatever whatever happened, Andrade got the pin. And then Priest hits the ring and destroys both baby faces, cuts a promo on Dom, and then JD says, yeah, Dom, what did he say? And Priest says, I'll tell you what I said. I don't need you guys. You guys need me. And he storms off. So they're doing a thing now. Uh, we've seen it a couple times. Now it appears to be something they're doing on every show. One long, uninterrupted shot. And oh, yeah, they do, they do it in the third hour every week, it seems, yeah. So this week, it starts with an interview with Indy and Candace, and then all of a sudden, Jackie's trying to interview him. She goes, oh, my God, hold on. And there's a brawl that's broken out, and Nye and Liv are trying to get at each other, and officials are breaking it up, so Jackie runs over there. And then Becky walks by and says, Jackie, I can do any job. May I have that mic? And so she gets a mic, and she starts walking towards the ring and doing her own commentary. She's backstage, and she runs across Maxine, and she tells her, is this your first shot at a world title? (laughs) She's only had nine matches. Maxine says, yes. Becky says, let those people know it won't be your last. And Maxine smiles. And then she walks all the way through Gorilla, tells them to get the camera ready. They're going to need a new promo shot. Goes through the curtain all the way down to the ring. It was awesome. Every week they should do this in the third hour. Yeah. And uh, it was a women's battle royal. And uh, not a ton of heat early, but uh, it did pick up a lot at the end. And uh, some of the notable spots were um, they actually did a spot with Ma- Maxine where she's she tosses out Candace because they've kind of been feuding. And it's supposed to be a big baby face spot, except this show is two hours from where Candace lives. And so it actually got booed when Maxine eliminated her. Yeah, yeah. But then Maxine threw out Indy and they did cheer that. And then Naya tossed Maxine and they booed uh, that too. got rid of her. Yeah, the fans, the fans, the fans did not want to see Maxine get eliminated. Then we had Becky tossing Piper, which got a big pop, and then Piper yanked Becky out of the ring, and uh, then we had oh my oh, god, oh god, the table spots. So yeah. Piper tears apart the table, but 
But then for whatever reason, she just ignores Becky and she starts to yank Nia out of the ring. So they start brawling and Nia grabs Piper and she's supposed to give Piper a choke slam onto Becky on the announce table. It's, and the table's supposed to break. Yes. Well, Piper barely goes up. She kind of lands on the edge of the table. The table does not break. Looks terrible. The fans start chanting one more time. Didn't they? They didn't. She do. Oh, this is the next thing was the, the next Samoa thing. Dro- the Samoan so, drop spot. Yeah. They chant one more time, and so Naya first tries to lift Piper up for a Samoan drop, can't and get she her cannot up. get her up. She tried twice, but the third time she got her, and she tries again, can't get her up. Finally, the third time she gets her up, and she's gonna like Samoan drop her through Becky in the table because the table didn't break. Well, now she overcompensates and she throws Piper too far. Piper lands on Becky's leg. Her foot kicks Becky right in the face, and the table doesn't break again. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. you got to keep Becky and I away from each other. Like, something bad's going to happen. So she's out. Maybe, maybe you should keep everyone away from Nia. Well, that's, that's actually the best idea. And then uh, Chelsea gets eliminated, but the refs are tending to Becky, so no one sees it. So she just there's, gets back in the there's, ring. There's three There's three refs. Natalia throws her out, and, yeah, no one sees it. But then they go to commercial, they come back, and she just gets tossed. That's yeah. why I don't even know why they did the spot. So Becky and Liv and Nia are the last three. Okay, well, also during the commercial, they put um, – they um, Nia did powerbomb um, – was it Becky Lynch to the table? You tell me. I didn't watch the commercial. Okay, they they powerbombed um, – uh, Becky Lynch was put through the table. All right, so she finally went through. Yeah. So it comes down to Becky, Liv, and Nia, and a uh, lot of heat. Well, well, once... I mean, uh, well, the deal is is that they said that Becky was not going to get back in, and then they go through it, and then she crawls in when there's like, yeah, the last three left. Yes, so a lot of heat for the last three, and they end up double-teaming Nia, and they eliminate her, which got a huge pop. So it's Liv and Becky one-on-one. They fight on the apron. They go back and forth. Becky gives her the manhandled slam on the apron. Liv falls to the floor. Becky wins her seventh women's title. Place goes crazy. She jumps the barricade. She celebrates in the crowd until the show ends. And then for 30 minutes after Raw went off the air, she signed autograph after autograph after autograph for all of these fans. And uh, she's the best. Mm -hmm. It's Becky Lynch. But uh, it ended up all right, this Battle Royal. I mean, Battle Royals aren't my thing, but uh, last few minutes were good. Last few minutes were good. Last few minutes had heat, yeah. But uh, other than that, I don't think it was a very good match. You know, they uh, said at the beginning of this show, they they opened up with uh, Pat McAfee and Michael Cole in the ring. Mm -hmm. And Pat McAfee says that this is only the fourth time in history that a title has been determined in a battle royal. In a battle royal. Yeah. And I was like, is that? I mean, I presume it is true. I have no evidence otherwise. But this seems like a WWE trope. But you're telling no, me it's, it's only happened it's, four times since 1963? Usually it's usually to determine a top contender. Well, sure. But I mean, AEW does that like every third week. Yeah. There's some battle royal to determine a contender. But only four times in history. Apparently they've done that. So that's not so bad, I guess. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.